Welcome to Medicine Mondays. For those of you who are new to my channel, my name is Herlene Das. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, all that great stuff. And so every Monday, I talk about a healthcare topic that you guys have voted you want to know more knowledge on. So what is this week's topic? I am so excited. It's on sexual health. So this is going to be a three-part series. We're going to do women's health this week, next week, men's health, and then the week after that, we're going to combine the two together, talk about consent, talk about the sex drive talk about a lot of things that we need answers to <laughs> so i'm so excited so this week is on women's health and we're going to talk about three main things that you guys have showed interest in have commented on instagram like you want to know this so this here it is vaginal ph bv which stands for bacterial vaginosis and hpv which stands for human human back human papilloma virus infection sorry don't know why i stumbled on that one but yes bv hpv vaginal ph what does it mean for us women men watch this video you want to know about your woman's body M women next week watch their video and then y'all can t stay tuned together on the third week all right i'm excited let's get right into it All right, so vaginal pH, you're probably wondering, what does that mean? Why is it important to us? So first, before I describe that, I want you guys to understand what pH is. pH just describes how acidic or alkaline a substance is, and alkaline just stands for basic. And so for my chem people, we have the scale 0 to 14. Anything below 7 is acidic, considered acidic, and anything above 7 is considered basic. And so when we're talking about the vaginal pH, it basically allows us to know how healthy the vagina environment is right and so the vaginal ph is typically acidic is roughly around 3.8 and 4.5 right and so it all depends also on the stage of life a woman is in if they're in the reproductive stages between 14 and 49 there's their vaginal ph is typically acidic but after menopause right their vaginal environment becomes more basic is roughly um higher than 4.5 but why is it important that now our vaginal environment is acidic yeah! It creates a barrier that prevents unhealthy bacteria and needs from over multiplying and growing, which could cause an infection. And so when the vaginal pH is the basic, it actually, you're actually at risk for bacterial infection and yeast infection. Now, how does the vagina become more basic? Well, let me tell you unprotected sex y'all make sure you are protected at all times when you're having intercourse because semen actually is way more alkaline basic than the vagina right and so unfortunately y'all men semen is super basic and can really mess up a woman's um, vaginal environment. But when you are having intercourse, the vagina does um, become a slightly more basic to help the semen travel because you know semen is there to um, allow the eggs to be fertilized, X, Y, and Z. We'll get into that in another video. And so when you're having unprotected sex, it does put the um, vagina at risk to have a bacterial infection, which is why a lot of women can actually tell when their spouse are cheating on them or stepping out on them and having um, having multiple partners. We'll get into that later in the video. It's I was actually shocked to finding out there's been studies. Women have testified about this. It's true. So we'll get into that later into the video. So I want to talk about the symptoms, right? I think it's super important for us women to be aware of our body because it lets us know when something's off, right? So first of all, a foul and fishy smell is a symptom, right? And it depends on the woman because every woman has a range of normal smells for them. Two, vaginal discharge that is white, gray, and green. And so also being aware of, is this your typical normal vaginal discharge that you're used to? Because when you go to your gynecologist, they're going to ask, okay, is, are you used to this type of smell? Are you used to this type of vaginal discharge? How is your body, right, reacting to this bacterial infection? Like, is this your norm? Another type of symptom is um, vaginal itching, irritation, right? And then burning while your urinate and so that's something to be aware of those are the symptoms but how how do we have a thrown off unbalanced ph okay so 
this is my favorite part of the video because we get into the deets we get into bv we get into hpv so so there are multiple factors that can throw off your ph right so we have antibiotics antibiotics can kill both good and bad bacteria so it's a lot of times you'll find that it can throw off your vaginal ph because the good bacteria in your vagina helps maintain an acidic environment which is why it's also important for women to not douche so douching basically is is when a woman cleans her vagina with a mixture of water with vinegar or baking soda or iodine 20 percent of women do douching and it's not really the best method to clean down there it's super important to just use water right because you're taking out the good bacteria that helps maintain that healthy acidic environment and so women using like scented products down there is super not super not good it's really not the best way right we want to use um unscented products if you do want to use products the best product you could use is water h2o right they say drink water so you have clear skin <laughs> <laughs> so just make sure you're using water for all cases to wash down there as well you don't need scented soap um what else can cause a thrown off ph obviously during your menstrual cycle your ph is a little bit more basic which is why when you do use a tampon it's super important to be aware to remove it and you don't um sleep with it at night because that can cause the toxic shock syndrome and um because you're allowing your the blood to you know be piled up and that can cause a basic pee which can cause the environment of the vagina to be very basic which is very harmful to the vagina environment because now you can be more predisposed for a bacterial infection bv which stands for bacterial vaginosis and bacterial vaginosis is just an overgrowth of unhealthy bacteria within the vagina environment okay i'm gonna have to take a walk for this one Bacterial vaginosis is basically an overgrowth of a bacteria within the vagina, right? So let me break it down a little bit further. There are two types of bacteria living within the vagina. Lactobacilli is the majority, and that's the healthy bacteria living within the vagina. Then you have anaerobes. Anaerobes are known to cause infectious bacteria. So when something disrupts the balance of these two bacteria, and there is an overgrowth of anaerobes, that's when we have bacterial infection. Now this, this is a juice. I was I wanted to get into all right so there has been studies that have shown women who experience BV or yeast infections after they sleep with their partner who they deem to be monogamous that they're in a monogamous relationship it most likely means your partner has stepped out on you has cheated on you what does this mean so basically right non-pathogenic bacteria can be transmitted from one individual to another. There are about 100 million bacteria being secreted from vaginal secretion, 10 million bacteria being secreted from ejaculation of a man, right? So a lot of things are getting a little mixy when you're having unprotected intercourse. Now, a woman's vaginal microbiome can actually adapt to the bacteria found on the penis of a long-term monogamous partner right because if you're with the same person you're able to adapt to their type of my microbiome that they carry right and so when you are with an individual where you are having unprotected sex with that person and your body adapts to that type of bacteria that they constantly introduce to your body when a new bacteria is introduced your it's like a attack to your microbiome okay let me just tell you this when you are promiscuous right when a man is promiscuous and he sleeps with multiple women Woman, right he's able to contract the bacteria that that woman has in their body and so if that man is able to contract more anaerobes right than lactobacilli then he sleeps with you your body now has more anaerobes and that is infectious bacteria so you might have that throws off your pH, that throws off the healthy balance that your body is used to and boom you get bv Boom, you get a yeast infection, right? Because your body is thrown off, the balance is thrown off. And it's super important for men to have good penile hygiene because under the foreskin is a bacterial haven.
Okay. So, y'all men need to make sure you're very, very clean down there because you can cause your partner to contract bacteria, right? Like I said, the bacteria within these environments are non-pathogenic until there is a disruption with the balance of how much bacteria is being introduced to the body, which is why when a man is promiscuous or when a woman is promiscuous and they have a lot of different type of bacteria being introduced to their body, they are predisposing themselves to getting a bacterial infection, having bacteria... Um, bacterial vaginosis or a yeast infection right because lactobacilli protects an overgrowth of canada um the fungus canada that grows and causes yeast right and so just be highly aware you are finding yourself constantly getting bv infections or yeast infections after sleeping after sleeping with someone use protective measurements use a condom guys that's the most that's like the moral of the story with all that details with science use protection it's super important that you have a condom on if you are going to be polyamorous polyamorous oh i can't say that word if you're gonna sleep with multiple people it's super important i know um y'all think the pull out method is you know ideal it's not because you are predisposing yourself from um being at risk of getting a sexually transmitted disease which brings up my next point the last point of the video is hpv i'm gonna have to sit down for this one because i want to make sure i talk about it in a way where it's a lot according to the cdc hpv is the most commonly sexually transmitted infection it's so common that most sexually active people will receive hpv sometime in their lifetime right and so the reason why it's so common is because you can get it from skin to skin contact you don't even need intercourse it's through the mouth throat genitals so any type of sexual activity could predispose you to hpv now how is what are what is HPV in terms of its severity? There are multiple strands of HPV and some don't even cause health problems, which is why a lot of people will contract HPV and not even show any symptoms. 90% of HPV infections actually can go away on its own within two years. That's what people actually have a misconception is that I have HPV, I'm gonna die. That's not the case because there are multiple strands, right? But the issue is because it goes with, it goes away within two years of your life during that time period you are capable of transmitting that disease to another individual and because a lot of people don't show symptoms they don't even realize that they are passing hpv to another individual those who get the hpv strand that cause genital warts may um go to the doctors get treated right and their symptoms of genital warts go away but you still have the virus right and so the virus has to leave your body right and so you can still potentially transmit hpv HPV even though your symptoms have gone away and so the issue with HPV when it comes to us women unfortunately there are strands that can cause cervical cancer right and so how can we test for HPV is through pap tests pap tests basically test to make sure that the cells within your cervix are healthy they're not growing abnormally if you have an abnormal pap test most likely your gynecologist will ask you to come in do a coposcopy which basically is a procedure to check to see the lining the cells of the lining of your cervix right if it's abnormal they take a biopsy send that biopsy to the path lab those check to see okay are these cells growing abnormally where they have an hpv strand that causes cancer or is this a strand that will flush out within itself and within two years you'll be fine so that's where you have to go to your gynecologist right i just wanted to be able to relay this information to you guys because i know there is a lot of misconceptions when it comes to stis it's a taboo topic to talk about about because a lot of people either want to blame the men blame the women you gave me this you gave me that but like let's you know educate ourselves you have to be smart use protection is so important guys if you are going to have multiple partners having condoms is so important i know you don't want to hear it but it is um go to your gynecologist go to your primary care physician go to whoever you go to so you can get sti testing done when you do um become promiscuous at a point it's super important that we take our sexual health very important right because we want to make sure that we're healthy at all times Aww.
well i hope i was able to give you guys informative information and you found this very helpful so we'll see you next monday we're going to talk about men's sexual health if you have any questions comment below subscribe like do all that great jazz dm me with your questions i'll talk to some clinicians i'll figure it out do my research so i'll be able to give you a productive video all right see you next monday Oh, 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 oh,